Did you know that before he was the mayor of Flavortown, Guy Fieri was just another struggling TV chef with a failed cooking show? It was called Guy Off the Hook. Keep watching for why Food Network canceled it. Live cooking shows have always held a special place in pop culture, dating all the way back to Julia Child on The French Chef throughout the 1960s and 1970s. The genre has certainly evolved over time, but the general formula mostly remains the same. A talented chef and or television personality cooks a meal step by step, explaining the process in an entertaining way. It's not one of our better examples of crepes, so I think I'll take it out and say, Goodbye. Most people don't have the time to buy every single ingredient for gourmet meals, nor the cash for some of the high-end appliances used by cooking show hosts. However, these shows remain popular because everyone loves good food, and a lot of people can relate to cooking. From that perspective, the idea for Guy Off the Hook as the edgy cooking show for a new generation makes sense. Putting Fietti in front of a live studio audience feels like a perfect fit given his outgoing personality, and his over-the-top approach would presumably flip the genre on its head. As good as it looked on paper, Guy Off the Hook never made it beyond a six-episode run in 2008. The food offerings on the show ring true to the Fietti brand, and are similar to some of the California cuisine seen on his other Food Network shows, like Guy's Big Bite and Diner's Drive-Ins and Dives. Perhaps as a bit of foreshadowing, there was even an episode titled Down Home Diner that gave some insight into some of Fietti's favorite spins on diner classics, like pretzel-crusted chicken tenders, mac and cheese layered with bacon, and a boozy Tennessee lemonade. Other episodes included Fietti's take on classic Mexican dishes, New Orleans-style sloshed shrimp, and, of course, the Geistro Pub, where we got a taste of what Fietti would do with classic pub grub. But while the world was deprived of potential future recipes, staging a set and live audience can incur a ton of extra fees on a studio. And if ratings aren't getting the bump to justify the costs, it's not surprising to see the show get the axe. Barely a year before Guy Off the Hook premiered, the Food Network's previous top live cooking show had already been canceled. The massively successful Emerald Live, with chef Emeril Lagasse, ran a decade prior, reinvigorating the Food Network and live cooking entertainment in general. Like Fietti, the chef catchphrases were a huge part of pop culture, and his big personality drew thousands of fans with every episode. But entertainment trends were moving in a different direction. In an excerpt from his book, From Scratch, Inside the Food Network, Alan Salkin explored how changes in leadership and television production in general shaped the future of the network. After hiring outside consultants, the network found that many viewers were growing less interested in dump-and-stir cooking shows in favor of the more reality, on-the-road location-focused premises networks like TLC and the Travel Channel were exploring. With that in mind, it's surprising something like Guy Off the Hook was ever greenlit in the first place. But it also opened the doorway for new faces to step in and make a name for themselves on the network, and for a show like Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives to thrive. Fietti wasn't always the mayor of Flavortown. It's important to remember that at the time of Guy Off the Hook's 2008 premiere, Fietti was only two years removed from his winning season on The Next Food Network star. He simply didn't have the same star power he has now. It seems at that time, the Food Network was trying a lot of different styles of shows and seemingly plugged Fietti into a few different hosting roles for the chef to find his TV star rhythm. Fietti was also well into his career as a chef chef and business owner before getting into TV. He's talked about how joining entertainment a little later in life allowed him to stay true to himself. Delicious. Delicious. Captain Ada Chef? Come on. Fietti told Business Insider, Getting the opportunity to do television, I thought, you know what, I don't know how long this is going to last. I'm going to appreciate every moment and take it responsibly and respectfully, while staying grounded to my family and true to what I want and believe in. However, Guy Off the Hook premiered on the heels of the success of Guy's Big Bite inaugural run in 2006. So it's just as likely that the live studio audience setup just wasn't working. It's hard to feel sorry about Guy Off the Hook's cancellation for too long, given the absolutely insane run Fietti has had on the Food Network. 
Between diners, drive-ins and dives, and Guy's Big Bite, Fietti has more than cemented his place in America's food culture. Even GQ can't ignore the simple pleasures of watching Fietti on Triple D crisscross the country in his vintage Camaro as he highlights local eateries and bold dishes. And he's also hosted close to a dozen other spin-offs and limited series. There are a few shows that pit Fietti and Rachel Ray against each other, where both chefs coach teams of celebrities and children in competition-based cooking. Other competition-style shows show Fietti searching for the next great culinary host in Guy's Big Project, putting popular chefs through a bracket-based tournament in Tournament of Champions, and combining cooking with extreme games in Guy's Grocery Games. Even for Fietti, that's a lot of content. Just because the classic cooking show format isn't exactly what it once was, doesn't mean there isn't any room for some innovation or a little splash of flavor town. Outside of live event appearances, there's Guy's Ranch Kitchen, where Fietti definitely dips into dump and stir territory, but without the live studio audience. Instead, he meets up with other celebrity chef friends as they just kind of hang out and try to outcook each other. Fietti even participated in a live cooking competition that aired on Facebook in May 2020. Fietti and his son Hunter faced off against Bill Murray and his restaurateur son Homer for bragging rights of the best signature nacho recipe. The Nacho Average Showdown was judged by Shaquille O'Neal and Terry Crews and helped raise $11,000 for the Restaurant Employee Relief Fund. Of course, the Fiettis emerged as the big winners, clearly in more ways than one. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite TV chefs are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.